Hello and welcome back. This is episode two of the Phil Show podcast. I'm your host, Philip Eichemans, as always, the captain of this ship. You're ready for takeoff. Enterprise voyage. Ready for takeoff. But in all seriousness, uh, how are you guys doing? How are you two listeners doing? I hope you're doing great. I'm doing fine. I'm ready for this episode, man. Uh, I'm always, it's always nerve wracking to start this uh, podcast episode because it's kind of <laughs> a loose, unscripted thing. And so I have to come up with uh, things to say, even though I have uh, a couple of topics that I wrote down to talk about. It's always like an unscripted, uh, loose experience. So I'm always like, what the fuck's going on? What uh, what the fuck's going to uh, happen next? I have no idea what's going to go next and what I'm talking about next. So uh, second to second is a surprise to me. So uh, we'll just see how this episode goes. Hopefully it's going to go better than the, the previous one. That's going to be my goal. But we'll never know. So uh, I always uh, think about things whenever I... Um, feel bored whenever I walk somewhere. Uh, I think a lot. Uh, I don't put headphones on. I'm not really specifically looking, scrolling on my uh, social media feed. Uh, instead, I just think about stuff, man. I, uh, I walk and I think uh, about stuff and that's what I'm going to share with you today. I, uh, that's my goal. Um, sometimes you're in the shower and then the hot water flows through your face and skin. And then sometimes you just come with good ideas. And there's there's kind of a science to that, uh, apparently. Uh, I think be, because your brain gets to a state of mind. And then, but that also happens when you're taking a shit, a massive shit. And then you just become a genius all of a sudden. Then you become the greatest philosopher, like... Uh, I imagine like the greatest philosophers who ever lived, like uh, like Socrates and, st and people like that, like those Greek philosophers. Greek? Were they Greek? I believe so. Uh, if not, I just embarrassed myself publicly on uh, for the whole internet, but that's okay. Uh, I feel like all these great philosophers um, were taking massive shits. And that's how they got like their most inspirational quotes. I I bet like Albert Einstein had the the biggest shit in his, in his entire life. Like I, for him to come up with E equals MC square, I bet his anus was bleeding so hard. I mean, I mean, goddamn, how how else did you come with such genius uh, fucking relativity theory? Come on, man, what the fuck? What have, what have you been eating that you, you've t taken such a massive shit to come up with that idea, that theory? I mean, this, I mean, yeah, I feel like every philosopher was just sitting like, you know, this, the statue with the, uh, where the guy has the fist underneath his chin and then he's just sitting down and thinking they left the toilet out of there, but it started on the toilet. That's how he was sitting on the toilet. Mm, like, mm. Fuck. I got it. And that's how all the great thinkers came to be. I mean, all the great thinkers begin in the toilet, taking the shit. So, yeah, anyways. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's how I got my ideas. A lot of um, bus drives, walking around, taking shits. And then that's... That's, those are the times where you're going to think about stuff, like philosoph philosophical stuff, abstract ideas, psychology. I'm really interested about psychology. Uh, I want to share some ideas that I was, was thinking about. And now I'm not, I'm not in, I'm not in, oh my God, I'm having a stroke. I can't speak. Let me drink my coffee. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm not an expert in any shape or form around the topics of psychology or philosophy or whatever. Let that be clear. I think that's already clear by now since you uh, listened to episode one. But let, let it be known that I have no facts around what I'm going to say. It's just things that I thought about 
And something I think it's fun to share. Maybe people can have uh, more ideas around it. And that's how we have a conversation, you know? So yeah, the things, whenever I'm taking shits, I'm thinking about the topics around like, for example, creative versus logical mindsets. I think it's super interesting to analyze like thinking styles and to categorize them. And of course, obviously no one is going to be 100% one way this or one way this 100%. Uh, there's always going to be like a spectrum and you're always going to be leaning more to one side. But there's always like a spectrum. You're not never 100% robot, you know. You're not 100%. Yes, hello. I am logical thinker 2000. I am the most logical thinker in the world. I am the most logical thinker in the world. And so I'm the logical thinker. And you're not never like the creative guy who is like on the on a DMT, DMT trip, like floating around and leaving rainbows and unicorns uh, as a trail while he's flying around while he grows his third eye on his forehead. Like, I'm the creative thinker. Love is the essence of the universe. I will spread my love and creativity into the universe. I create universe. I am, therefore, uh, therefore, uh, therefore I create and I am. I think, therefore, I am. That was the correct <laughs> quote I was looking for. God damn it. Sometimes it's hard, man. Sometimes speaking is hard. Even when you're coming up with something funny to say, you fuck it all up because you're, <laughs> you cannot speak. And then, uh, yeah, that's the way it is. So I don't think you're hundred. Whenever you're you're hundred percent logical thinker, and you're just you're just Stephen Hawkins was an like anomaly. Like Stephen Hawkins was an ex exception to that rule, but I don't think we are all Stephen Hawkins. So, or we are all like this floating Buddha of creativity. You know, like hello. I am Stephen Hawkins. I know all the secrets about the universe. Yeah, hello. I am the smartest man alive. Yes, bitches. You have nothing on me, bitches. I know everything. I know more than you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that's it, man. So what I want to talk about is like the differences between the creative and the logical mindset. And is, um, what I think, you know? So I think the differences lie in the problem-solving skills. Uh, we all have problem-solving sol problem skills, uh, but the uh, creative versus logical, the, the way they problem-solve is differently. Like there's a huge contrast between them. And the way I think, like let's take logical mindset for as an example, right? Logical mindset is very mathematical. Like in math, it's very logical because you're training your logical thinking skills. There's usually one way how to solve a problem. And that's how I think logical thinkers uh, solve problems is how, the, how can you think of the most efficient, optimized uh, way of solving that problem? There's always going to be one solution that is the best way to solve the problem. And, um, that I also think, for example, a lot of programmers have logical thinking because in programming, while you're coding, there's like always um, the best way in how you can solve the problem. There's like always uh, a correct way of coding, like the best way of coding, like to solve. Obviously, I'm not a programmer, so, but hopefully you know what I'm talking about. And uh so it's about the optimizing and make making the best efficient solution to, to solve a problem, right? Uh, and so if you if you look at like gamers and uh, the playing styles, play, the different playing styles of gamers, uh, oftentimes when you see logical thinkers, there's gonna they're gonna come up. That's how you that's how you get like meta gaming. Uh, meta meta gaming for those who don't know, it's like the most efficient way of uh, finding the most optimized way of playing the game, like the best solution to, to win, to do it the fastest, whatever it is. 
I think uh, people who come up with meta metas in the game in games are oftentimes logical thinkers because whenever you have the skill set the capability to think of the most efficient optimized solution um, that's that's you practicing your logical thinking skills um, now in contrary the creative um, skills the mind skill oh my god mind skittles the creative mindset is is that you as a creative person you're not necessarily going to think about the most efficient way or optimized way on one way to solve the problem you're going to think of thousand other ways how you can solve a problem so the logical guy is going to think of one perfect solution while the creative is going to think of thousand other ones right and it's not to say that one is better than the other or one's correct or, or the other is wrong it's just that the skill sets are different and uh there should be differences in how you apply the skill sets and uh, so the skill set of a creative person is to think of thousand ways that's the skill the skill of a logical one is to think of that one perfect solution so there are going to be other different situations in how you can apply these two different skills right like if you see for example like art artists do what they do because they have that creative skill set in art you're allowed to it's actually encouraged and it's actually you need to have the capability of, th of thinking of thousand solutions to solve a problem look at for example concept artists when whenever there's like a production pipeline for creating a game or a film or whatever and you're at the conceptual stage you have concept artists who solve the problem of a director who doesn't know necessarily who has a vision but doesn't know necessarily how for example a character is going to look like or an environment is going to look like and that's why you have concept artists that are going to think of thousand iterations of clothing of uh, how a character looks how his face looks how his whatever looks how weapons look and Usually there's thousands of iterations before the director is, is going with uh, with one specific result. And that's how artists become artists because there you're 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 applying your skill sets of thinking of thousand in iterations of how you can uh, solve the problem. And that's why I think programmers become programmers because they're they're utilizing their logical skill set. I think it's important, like, I don't think we're either Stephen Hawkins or uh, like the floating Buddha of creativity. We're always in the spectrum, but we're always leaning uh, heavier to one side or the other. But we still have both skill sets. And I think it's good to realize how you can use both uh, in your advantage. And also self-awareness of where you lie in the spectrum is good too because then it's it it makes kind of life easier for me it has been easier for me to make a decision in my life because i, I didn't want to do anything else i i know like i think it i always thought of the idea that it could be cool for me to learn to code so i can make my own games but uh i just enjoy the process of me utilizing the skill set that i have of art that i can apply with art that I don't feel I really feel no need into to learn any coding whatsoever I think self-awareness is important to make things in life easier and I think looking at this way I think could help I don't know maybe it doesn't but you know it's always good to uh, put it out there and so but also to further emphasize or make uh, a bit bigger point to this what what I'm talking about right now this the differences between mindsets is uh, that I have like an example like a hypothesis like we can like we can visually showcase the differences in the mindset this is something that I like to call the locked the locked door example and uh, I made it up but it's something that I can further visualize or emphasize the point that I'm trying to make and the locked door example is basically this. 
So you, you're in a hallway or whatever it is, and you have a locked door. Uh, the door's locked, and you want to get through the door. You want to get inside the room, and uh, but the door's locked. How you get in there? So a logical mindset will think, okay, the most logical answer is to open the locked door is to get the key that opens the lock. How do I get the key? This is the most efficient way. The most optimized way is to get the key, open the door, get inside. So the logical mindset is going to reverse engineer. Okay, I need the key. How do I get the key? I have to do this, get the key, open the door, get in there. Okay, so, and he'll not, he'll not think of other ways to do it because he knows logically that's the best, most efficient way to do it. And this is what he's going to go for. Now, a creative mindset, how is, how is he, how is he going to solve that problem? A creative, uh, creative thinker is going to think, uh, oh, let me open the door. Oh shit, it's locked. Oh shit, what do I have to do? There's a barrier to where I need to go. What do I do? Um, yeah, axe, I can use an axe. Axes cut through wood. Uh, I, maybe I can axe through the door and then go inside this way. Uh, maybe I can uh, use my credit card to open the... To, to slide it in between to open the door. I've seen that in movies. Uh, maybe you can use a lockpick, uh, a paperclip uh, to lockpick this uh, opening, right? This this lock. I've seen that in movies too, like, like lockpick. Or maybe I can find a window from behind that is open or break through the window to get into the room. Maybe I can find my way up. It, maybe the ceiling has an opening. Maybe I can go through the ceiling and from uh, through the ceiling into the room. Um, maybe I can w wait for someone to come over to, to open the door and then I can uh, quickly follow them inside the room. You know, this is how a creative mindset is going to think of. Like, he's probably going to ignore the fact that there's like the most efficient way, but he's going to think of a thousand other ways how to get in. I think th this is just an interesting uh, visualization of how uh, both minds are different, and I think uh, you should use both into your advantage. I really don't think we are all only logical or all only creative, because usually we have like the associations and images in mind. Like when you think of a logical thinker, you think uh, scientist. Think of a. a emotionless businessman we think of a programmer uh, and the same goes for a creative person we think of uh, a stoner in his basement with a guitar we think of an artist with a uh, just painting like paintings in his uh, room and earning no money and i think all these associations and images that we have around these you know these Mindsets is not necessarily true. Uh, because, like, for example, I think entrepreneurs are the most creative people in the world. I think you, you wouldn't necessarily think that because, well, you think entrepreneurs, you know, they, they're very, they have a very good skill set of um, creating systems in order to generate income. And so they really get good at making money, but that's just uh, coincidentally what they're good at. And that's why they're entrepreneurs and they find people to do things that they're not good at. And that's why they're, they're leaders. And they be, and people have all certain times they have the association that they're like either logical or this or that, but I think they're super creative. I think to in in a world where a certain idea or norm is pushed on you from a from a very young age, you have to you're dependent on education. You have to be a good doctor or lawyer to have um, a lot of money. Yet yeah, then you can buy a house. Then you have married. Then your children. You have to live this very specific lifestyle in a world where this is pushed, and this is the norm. Uh, it's very hard to be an entrepreneur because you're gonna you're going to think differently. You're going to think outside the box. You're going to think of other ways how you can generate money and monetize. And in a world where the odds are against you, uh, you have to have the skill set of thinking of a thousand ways how you can make 
that vision come true. And in order to be successful, I believe you have to have failed a lot of a thousand times before. And in order to fail a thousand times, you have to come up with a thousand other ways and ideas how you can make it work. And I think that's why a lot of entrepreneurs are super creative. But you know, there's also like examples of people who are just meta gaming life. They're finding the most efficient way how to solve a problem in life. And that's how they get to certain success. But, uh, I think like the stereotypical images of those mindsets are not necessarily true. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I think it's interesting to be self-aware and utilize the skills in your best advantage. So um, that's what I've been thinking about when uh, whenever I take massive shits. So yeah, just whenever you're taking a shit, you know, just take your time to uh, think of things. Maybe you can come up with some ideas that are cool for conversations. And uh, yeah, I'm just interested to know what you two listeners think about it as well. Other than that, I've watched uh, a lot of Caesar Milan. I think uh, that's a crazy segue, isn't it? Like going from <laughs> going from uh, abstract ideas to Caesar Milan. The, Oh, we got to be dominant. You got to be the leader of the pack. You got to catch the fish, smack the fish. You eat the fish. You get happy, full belly. Yeah, bro. Now, in all seriousness, um, I think Caesar Milan is a fucking legend. He's my legend anyway. Uh, I love dogs. Uh, I really do love dogs. I love animals in general. And uh, animals are fascinating. We're basically animals. We, we, we share the same brain. We have the amygdala that most reptiles and chickens have. We completely operate on emotions, fears, hunger. Uh, we are driven by reproducing and uh, everything, our, all our actions are based on emotions. The only difference is that we developed the prefrontal cortex, and that's why we can logically rationalize things. And that's oftentimes why we have why we have the dilemma of saying some things but acting in a completely different way. It's because logically we think about stuff. That's our prefrontal cortex, and then we act completely different. Because we have our amygdala, it's completely emotional. It's based on emotional thinking. And um, <laughs> sometimes when you're dealing with uh, women, you can ask them, sometimes you can ask them uh, something like, and they will give an, a logical answer, but they'll, they'll do act completely different, uh, like completely differently than what they an logically answered. It's because, and not not necessarily women though, we all do it, men, women. And it's just the prefrontal cortex versus the amygdala dilemma we have. I think uh, animals are interesting because what Caesar Milan shows us is that dogs are just a mirror image of our energy and our behaviors and what behaviors we are unconsciously enabling the dog and we're unconsciously rewarding bad behaviors without our knowing. Dogs and in nature, like dogs specifically need a leader. And if there is no confident leader leading the pack, um, then the dog is going to try to be the leader, right? And so he talks about things like boundaries, rules, limitations, discipline in order to be a leader, good leader for your dog. And oftentimes, like always in his shows, whenever he comes, whenever he comes and to deal with a bad dog or an aggressive dog or a misbehaved dog or whatever, like 
instantly he can instantly deal with the dog instantly like there a few seconds or a few minutes he can show that's not the dog there's like a very insecure weird energy kind of person that is like the master of the dog right and i, I know a lot of people already uh, conceptualize or conceptualize the idea that uh, it's not never the dog is the owner blah 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 but i don't think we really realize how much influence how much direct influence we not only have to you know the dogs that we control but to other people as well and um, there's a lot that goes this unconscious but the things that caesar teaches people i think it's uh important for everyone to know i mean practicing the skills to be a good leader is is gonna help everyone in the end i, I believe uh, a lot of times you see dogs with like where they have only too much affection and that's all the the person is giving based on you know based on some um uh, weird uh reasons emotional reasons that the owners have the, oftentimes those, those are gonna get that's what how you get like very aggressive dogs because it's only affection and no rules boundaries limitations and no discipline and uh a dog needs discipline and a strong leader and the same thing i think goes for for children as well you can create horrible children if you're not practicing the right leadership skills, boundaries, rules, limitations, discipline. And often, often time we reward behaviors and those become the habits. And unconsciously, sometimes people reward bad behaviors and that comes the, becomes the bad habits of the dogs. And then they have to deal with a bad dog and they don't know. And then they blame it on the dog. And sometimes people kill dogs for that reason because they don't know how to deal with it the dog becomes so aggressive they don't know uh how to solve it anymore they think it's the dog they tried everything in their mind and it all it all came down to just uh rewarding bad behaviors and not having boundaries rules or discipline for the dog you no, you were never showcasing the leadership that the dog needed in order to behave properly and now the dog has bad behaviors that you rewarded and now you can deal with the consequences and now you want to kill the dog because because of it i think that's tragic man and i think what caesar milan does to teach people is, is super effective because it, he does is not even there for the dog anymore he's there for the humans he's there for people he's there to teach people leadership skills that can help not even not only help have better dogs but i think help better humans uh i think sometimes we forget the direct influence we have on other humans and if you see especially for children I think children is an easy example because they're impressionable and they imitate us in the most detail because they're learning and they're trying to figure out life. But if we have direct influence over adults, like imagine children, what, what do you, I think it's good for every individual to practice some type of leadership uh, behavior, like leadership uh, skill. Those are boundaries, rules, limitations, discipline in, in order to affect, to positively affect other people and influence other people. Um, that I, That's my biggest takeaway from watching Caesar, Caesar Milan, funny enough. Uh, I know it's funny, like he does that thing, ha ha ha, he, he has a Mexican accent, but I think there's a lot of powerful fucking stuff that Caesar Milan teaches that is often overlooked because he's just he's uh people see him as, uh, as the dog whisperer you know I'm the dog whisperer but there's so much fucking truth to what he's teaching it's incredible 
And um, yeah, I just want to mention that because it's it's fascinating to see. Um, and I think also when you remember how the South Park episode went, I mean, that was a genius episode, man. I don't even think it was much of a parody at all. I think they did a great job visualizing what he does and what he teaches. And they made a, a huge point, like with Cartman and his mom. Uh, I think most people overlook that point. Uh, like when Caesar came there and uh, uh, exercised like or helped the mom train to be a good leader, disciplined Cartman, and until the point that he became a well-behaved person, he was eating his grapefruit, doing homework and stuff like this, and the mom got emotional. Oh, Cartman, I'm so proud. And then uh, at the end of the day, you see the Cartman's mom uh, tell uh, Caesar like, oh, I got two tickets for uh, this and this. Uh, I, want, I was wondering maybe we could go together or something. And then Caesar goes like, no, I'm right. I, I'm, I'm finished. I have another client. Uh, you're just another client. I have to, I have to work with someone else now. And then she goes like, oh, okay, yeah. And then she turns around to Carmen and says, Carmen, would you like to go to uh, with me? I got, and uh, maybe on their way we can buy some toys. And then Carmen says, okay, uh, could I have maybe two toys? And then one goes. Sure, honey, everything you want. And I think there's so that is there's such a huge real life true in there. Like for me, for me personally, what I got out of there is like the mom is the mom has misplaced emotions that she's projecting onto her son, and that's how she's creating a monster of a child because she's a single mom and she just trying to find uh trying to find a way to share her life or affection with another partner or person but she does that with her son and so there's a lot of misplaced emotions there and because that's why she's not uh she's not she's not applying her discipline skills she's they're completely the opposite, right? Because there's a lot of misplaced emotions and that's how she created like a monster of a child. And I think there's so much true in there, man. I think Matt Stone and Trey Parker the, the, doing an amazing job creating that show. I think it's amazing. Yeah, so basically that's all I have for now. Uh, it got It got kind of serious, but I think it was, I hope it was interesting nonetheless, uh, this episode. Um, yeah, I think th those are the only topics I had to talk about, man. I don't know what else to talk about. This is it. Sometimes you have it, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you have longer episodes, sometimes, I don't know. But uh, I hope you two listeners enjoyed it. Um, I hope we can grow, the, you know, to have three listeners. But we'll see how it goes. And uh, if you think it was interesting, let me know. I'm always curious to know. Um, this is going to be it for now. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next episode. Yeah. See ya.